Maps have been a core feature of iPhone since the very first device shipped back in 2007. And the underlying framework has been available to us developers to use for almost as long. Even better, Apple provides a Swift UI map view that wraps the underlying map framework beautifully, letting us place maps, annotations, and more right alongside the rest of your UI view hierarchy you have already. Let's start with something real simple, just showing a map on the screen. Maps and all their configuration data come from a dedicated framework called MapKit. So our first step is to import MapKit to our file. And now we can place a map in our Swift UI view with just one line of code. Map, like that. There's the map, okay? That's enough to show a map on the screen. Do press Command R, try noodling around a little bit. You'll find you can drag around a little bit and so forth. I would, if I were you, take a moment to learn the various shortcuts you can have here. For example, if you hold down the Option key, like that, you'll see two fingers appear. And if you click and drag, you can do pinch gestures like that to zoom in and out, and they move closer together nicely. <clears throat> if you hold down Option and then Shift, they stick together like that. And now you can pan, uh, sorry, just a tilt uh, of the thing, the pitch, uh, to get different angles like that. And if you want, you can simulate the single finger uh, map gestures you have on iPhone by just clicking once, clicking again, and then dragging up and down with your mouse. So again, that's click once, click again, and drag up and down. Just like you can have on, on the regular Maps app. Now, once you're in control of the app here, feeling good, there are stacks of ways you can customize this basic map view. For example, you can add a map style modifier to customize how the map views. We could say, I like a map style using dot, dot imagery. Give me a uh, satellite style map like that. Or we could say, I want to have uh, the satellite view, but also street map data. That's called a hybrid map. And now you get place names and roads and similar. Or you could say, I want to have uh, both maps, so satellite and, and street information, hybrid map, but I want to add realistic elevation, uh, making a 3D map. So it's a hybrid with elevation option of dot realistic. And now I press Command R, you know, just explore the map a little bit. You could say, okay, Let's go uh, down here into London. Obviously not the whole world is, uh, has realistic elevation, that'd be a bit much. Uh, you can just basically zoom in and find a place. Here's Trafalgar Square, here's uh, Westminster Abbey and stuff down here. And it's got 3D mode turned on, so when you do your whole uh, pitch option, which again is option and uh, shift like that, and go in, you'll see it's all in 3D mode now. So you can just basically grab this thing and try zooming around, uh, in this case, the, the Tower of Westminster right here with the Big Ben bell in sight. Um, so you can see it's all very nice uh, with basically almost no code. Uh, you can, if you want to ad adjust the way the user can work with your map, like can they zoom or rotate or whatever. For example, we can make a map that always stays centered on a particular location, but users can still adjust rotation and zoom. We could say this map has interaction modes of uh, let's do rotate and zoom. And so now I can go in and out, I can turn around and around, uh, but I can't go up and down. I can basically only go in and then around that area. I can't, you know, zoom in on it. I can't, sorry, pan around anywhere. Or we could say actually there are no interaction modes, an empty array here, meaning the map is always exactly fixed. You can't pan around, you can't zoom, you can't rotate, nothing works anymore. Now, those are all the easy customization options, but there are some more that take thinking. Uh, firstly, controlling the position. Second, placing annotations. And thirdly, handling taps on there. First, you can customize the position of the camera, either as an initial position where you're saying where the map should start, or as a binding to its current position, which tracks it over time. For example, I could say, let's add a property to our view here, storing the location of London. So let's take a bit of code, I'm afraid. Our position is a map camera position dot region. Region, like that. This takes, as you can see, an MK coordinate region, and that's where the code comes in. They're pretty wordy. MK coordinate region here. You can see it has a center and a span, as in what, what to focus on and how much to show around it. So we'll say 
uh, that our sensor is CL location coordinate 2D. I provide latitude and longitude here for where you want to focus the thing on. Our latitude of London is 51.507222, like that. And the longitude is minus 0.1275, that. And the span is how much a show around it in uh, the, the degrees of the, of the uh, latitude and longitude. Um, they are complex. If you're into maps, you'll know that uh, the size of uh, the span varies in where you are in the world. Uh, as you're going north and south, they stay the same. It's like 111 kilometers, I think, per degree or something like that. Um, and the going east to west, they shrink as you're getting very close to the pole. So if you're getting near the top, you're going to walk very, very far around the entire world, whereas at the equator, it's, it matches, I think, 100. 1116-ish, something like that. Um, so prior span, I'm gonna say I want MK coordinate span, latitude delta of one, longitude delta of one, like that. And that'll give us a decent uh, view of London. And actually, I'm very sure it might even say the size of these things uh, in the documentation, if we're lucky. Not there, cool. This one, all there, cool. <laughs> so uh, the Apple, I'm sure somewhere say the size of these things, but clearly not where I'm seeing it here. Um, ha, there we go, uh, 111 kilometers, boom. Uh, so at the, at the equator, one degree of longitude is 111 kilometers, but at the, the poles, it's zero kilometers, because it's obviously it's, you know, tiny, infinitely small at that point. Anyway, that is London as a position, and I can use that for the starting position for our map. So I might say here that the initial position is that position value. And now in the maps previewed like so, hopefully, boom, we see London neatly framed on the screen. Now this specifies an initial position. If you want to change the position over time, you got to mark it as state, then pass it in as a binding. So we'd say here, at state, private var position, like that, same otherwise. And then for the map down here, we'll pass in position as, oops, with a P, as dollar position, like that. So it's a two-way binding. It's not gonna work the way you expect, that's okay. I'll explain in a minute why not. Um, but now that it's program state, we can change it by adding some various locations with buttons around the map to jump to. For example, we could place this whole thing inside like a V-stack with the map inside it. And after the map, add a H-stack with, let's do spacing 50. And then we'll do a button called Paris, like that, there we go. And when that's pressed, position set to a map camera, region, get rid of the big code again. MK, coordinate region, we've got uh, that one. So, uh, center for Paris, oops, Daisy, it's gonna be a C allocation coordinate 2D, latitude of uh, 48.8566, and longitude of 2.3522. And then for the span, uh, you know, one and one is fine. So that's MK coordinate span, one and one. So about the same zoom level as London. Then we'll add some more. Let's do, uh, that's Paris. We can do another one for maybe Tokyo below it. Add more if you want to. I'm not doing any more than that. You get the point. Uh, Tokyo is here. And for Tokyo, our position is going to be centered at 35.6897, and then longitude of 139.6922, same approximately zoom level, like that. Uh, so I'll press Command R and see how that looks. It should now jump between various well-known capitals. There's London, there is Paris, and there is Tokyo. Always surprises me that London's actually surprisingly big in terms of its sprawl compared to Tokyo. Because there's nothing, there's, this is basically Fuji almost at this point in Tokyo. Anyway, they, they build higher than we do. Okay, so like I said, although we're passing a binding to the map, this thing here, the, the two-way binding position, we can't just read the new position value as the user moves around. Instead, we've got a separate on-map camera change modifier that tells us when the value changes either immediately or once movement has ended. For example, we could say, uh, I want to get an update 
when the map's finished being dragged and print out the new uh, location. So I'd say here on map camera change, print, actually I'll accept the context, sorry, the map update context here, print context dot region like that. What is being shown? That means is now I can basically drag the map around fully. Let's clear the log a little bit, drag it around. Nothing's printed out. When I release, it finally prints out. So it's only doing it when you actually stop dragging. And there's your new uh, data. If you wanted continuous mode information, you could ask for that. Just add frequency of dot continuous, like so. And now you'll get updates constantly as you're dragging. So now if I clear the log out uh, here, you're gonna see it's just constantly printing out data. I'm gonna release to get the information. Now, you might think continuous mode is always preferable, but it's really not that simple. You know, if you're running a search on where the user has placed the map, for example, that's kind of thing you only want to do when they've actually finished moving, not constantly, there's no point. The second customization I want to look at is how we place annotations. To do this takes at least three steps, depending on your goal. You want to find new type that contains your location information. Then you want to make an array of all those locations in one place and then add them as annotations in the map somehow. Whatever type you choose to work with must conform to identifiable so SwiftUI can know each map location uniquely. For example, we might start with a new struct called location, which is identifiable, it has an ID attached to it, and then a name string and a coordinate, CL location coordinate 2D. And now we can basically go ahead and define a range of locations in our uh, body here. I could say, for example, uh, locations, tap it in, locations is an array of, I'm gonna do just like two of these things. Location name is Buckingham Palace. Coordinate is CL location coordinate 2D. 51.501 longitude minus 0.141. And then second one will be Tower of London. Coordinate for that is 51.508 uh, longitude minus 0 0.076, 76 even, six, all right. Uh, and now step three is the important part. Let's get rid of some code here, it's not easy anymore. You can just go away, you can just go away. Uh, oh no, we did location still. Sorry, no we don't need location. Sorry, I'm being silly. Leave it there, go away, fine. Um, now, the important part, we can feed the array of our locations into the map view as content to display. Now SwiftUI provides a couple of different content types to display, but a simple one just called a marker, a little balloon on the map with a title and a latitude, longitude coordinate attached to it. For example, we could say this map has something inside. We'll do a for each our locations with one location coming in. And we'll use that to say there's a marker of location name with a coordinate being locations coordinate, like that. And when that code runs, you're gonna see two balloons appear on our map, one at Buckingham Palace and one of Tower of London. And also notice, by the way, how the map has automatically zoomed in to make sure those two markers are fully visible. Now, if you want more control over your markers, you wanna use a different type, not just marker. You wanna use one called annotation. This lets you provide a completely custom view to use instead of the standard sort of balloon thing they have going on. And if you prefer, you can also hide the default title and replace it with your own. For example, we could say, there's an annotation with those information, but then inside that will be the text of our location name in a font of headline with some padding around it, then a background of blue gradient, then a foreground style of white and a clip shape of capsule. I'll also say that we have an annotation titles of hidden hide the default marker for it. Now it should see our things visible like so. 
Very nice. That's the second way to customize it. The last one to look at is how we handle taps using an on tap gesture. This tells us where on the map these are tapped, but it does so in coordinates relative to the whole screen. How many units to the right and down we have on our screen. What we want to do is get the actual map location all the time. Where do they tap? They've tapped on Clapham, for example, or Chelsea or whatever. That's where they tapped on that exact coordinate. To do that, we need a special view called a map reader. And when you wrap one of these around a map, you'll be handed a special map proxy object that's able to convert screen locations to map locations and the other way as well. So we'd say in our code, around our map is a map reader with that proxy coming in. I'll in the code inside it like so. And now let's just ditch all the for each, it's not really need anymore. Now we'll add an on tap gesture with the screen position coming in. And we'll say, can we convert that screen position, position uh, to be coordinates? We'll say, if let our coordinate is our map proxy converting that point on the screen position from a local uh, coordinate space, then print the coordinate out. Now this local part, this means we're converting the map's local coordinate space for this position. Meaning that if you have a, a, a big layout with just your map being a tiny part of it, it's measuring from the top left corner of just the map by itself. If you had said, give me in global space, it goes to the very root of the whole screen, rather than the root of where the map actually is. 